नमस्कार तो वी आर बैक विथ वन मोर राउंड ऑफ आवर वर्चुअल इवेंट एंड दिस टाइम आवर वर्चुअल इवेंट इज ऑन द नीड्स असेसमेंट ऑफ लेपसी कॉलोनीज एज यू नो इट्स ऑलवेज अ प्लेजर टू कम बैक एंड डिस्कस विथ यू on our different experiences of uh, doing interventions on different aspects of uh, uh, leprosy and uh, uh, this event uh, we have been organizing every month and the purpose is to uh, share our learning with uh, all of you get your feedback and uh, further improve uh this is a collective platform where uh, we try to engage uh, different stakeholders uh, uh as you can see two very important stakeholders today uh, connected with us as uh, uh, our chief guest and guest of honor uh, the chief guest for today's event is uh, mr gorav sain uh, ceo of uh, sasakawa india leprosy foundation welcome sir and uh, as you may know sasakawa uh, also works uh, largely uh, with leprosy colonies of course like we also work uh, directly with community but sasakawa specifically they work with leprosy colonies and uh, the other guest Uh, who is our guest of honor today she is uh, madam maya ranwari she is president of association of people affected by leprosy which is a, a quite an old organization and uh, a very important uh, stakeholder the all the work which we are doing for leprosy is for the leprosy affected and madam as president of apal uh, she represents their voices so she is a very very important i will say the most important stakeholder for any work which is done uh, in the leprosy colonies so madam welcome as this uh, event uh, unfolds we would uh, inform you that uh, 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 inform you that uh, this event will take around 1 uh, hour uh, approximately and uh, towards the end of uh, uh, the hour meaning uh, after we have completed around 50 minutes we will have a time for question and answer so kindly keep uh, writing your uh, questions your observations etc in the chat box of course at the end you will also have an option to raise hand and ask your question directly now without any further ado i would uh, request my colleague dr pradipta kumar nayak who is our national county based rehabilitation coordinator uh, to talk about uh, the purpose of this needs assessment why did we do this needs assessment what was the need for doing this needs assessment dr padipta please thank you sir good afternoon everybody uh, as i start my presentation uh, uh, let me share with you a happy fact that our chief guest uh, mr gorov sen has written a very pertinent article in india development review idr the article is titled living with leprosy in india he vividly describes the issues in colonies nlr india has long been working with the people living in the leprosy colonies we agree with him that the people in colonies do suffer from various issues and they need support india is having more than 750 leprosy colonies however there is no official data about the people living there and their needs while doing interventions in the colonies where we work we felt 
that our data needed to be updated and needed to be more comprehensive. It is important to have data driven development and data driven plan. So we decided to collect data by doing needs assessment of the leprosy colonies so that we could have practical plans and do our activities. And we wanted to do participatory assessment so that the people in the colonies, including the affected people, the intended beneficiaries, women, adults and boys and girls and senior citizens participate in the process and assess their own needs with us. We felt it necessary to engage all or most of the residents in data collections, as we believe that development would not be effective if the intended beneficiaries are not involved in the assessment and planning. So our purpose was to collect and use the data for defining strategies for effective implementation of national leprosy eradication program in the respective states. The data would also help us in developing our future interventions based on current needs of persons affected by leprosy in leprosy colonies. In this art, our main purpose of the needs assessment was to do planning and development interventions by using recent data. But how did we do it? What were the findings? I think you're going to listen to very soon. Thank you. Thanks. <coughs> Thanks, Dr. Pradipta. Explaining purpose, why we went on to do this uh, initiative. I'll be requesting uh, my colleague uh, Amit, Amit Jain, who is manager of monitoring, evaluation, and learning at NLR India. And he led the process in terms of the methodology and support provided for uh, data collection and analysis. So Amit will be talking on the methodology which we have used for this needs assessment. Amit. Thank you, sir. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. My name Amit, is Amit. Uh, Amit, can you make it in presentation mode? Yes, sir. Yeah. Hi. Yes, sir. My name is Amit, and uh, I'm ha I'm managing monitoring, evaluation, and learning at NLR India for the last four years. Uh, today, I am sharing the methodology of need assessment of the leprosy colonies. We did this project in in the year 2022. So we completed the implement implementation plan in three phases. In the first phase, uh, we listed out the uh, leprosy colonies to be covered, developed the questionnaire, identified the volunteers from leprosy colonies, set up the technology using the mobile app, and trained the volunteers or data collection. The second phase comprises of the data collection of the households of the leprosy colonies, and then the compilation and validation of data was done. In phase three, uh, the focus group discussions were conducted, followed by uh, data analysis and report writing. This is an overview of the methodology that we adopted. A mixed method approach was adopted, uh, combining both quantitative and qualitative data collection. It included the both open and closed ended survey question and the focus group discussion. The data collection tool was the Kobo mobile app that is very common uh, in, in current scenarios and many development partners are using it. It is a mobile based survey platform and it is an open source a platform for using the mobile app. It is very user friendly. It gives us options to uh, have multiple choice questions and it uh, it provides the user to collect the data offline 
and upload the data whenever the connectivity comes. The engagement and training of field teams was conducted in various phases. In the initial phase, we provided the training to the volunteers and the community-based rehabilitation coordinators uh, for a two-day workshop. And then the handholding was provided to the field team when the data collection was happening. They went door to door to complete the surveys and the FGDs were conducted with the informed consent of the participants. For quantitative data, we targeted uh, 150 colonies and more than three, more than 3,800 households. But however, due to some operational challenges, we managed to complete 2,192 households across 129 colonies. The data collected was uh, included the socio demographic details of the participants, their disabilities, their treatment status, their the details of the family members and the needs related to disability care, assistive devices, education support, medical care, livelihood, and the documents required to access government schemes. This is the table which shows the breakup of the households covered across seven states. For qualitative data, we managed to complete 123 FGDs and as a process, we took the informed consent of the participants before starting the FGDs. The FGDs were conducted by the CBRCs, who are our field staff, along with the volunteers. And we formed the male and female groups for the discussions. Audio recordings and the notes were collected for transcription and translation. The team who collected the data in the field and conducted the focus group discussions are the change agents who are very much familiar and the residents of the leprosy colonies. They, the criteria was that either they are either male or female with of at least 18 years of age and have are good in mobile and application handling. The initial training was online and followed by hands on hand holding sessions on Kobo mobile app. The informed consent was taken uh, from the participants and the execution was done through the data collected, whatever data collected they have, they have, uh, they sync their data at the end of the day to share the data to the head office so that the data can be seen in real time and the validation can be done. The challenges, the challenge, the main challenges are due to, uh, are there are uh, there were two main reasons of challenges. The first one is the logistic and geographical hurdles, and the second one is stigma. The stigma is because I am talking about stigma because the participants were hesitant uh, while sharing their data because they were not uh, uh, very much comfortable in sharing their personal details and their uh, status uh, such as education status and livelihood status. And the logistics and geographical hurdles, we uh, we had some operational challenges due to uh, connectivity issues of the roads and the uh, extreme weather conditions and going to the remote locations. However, in the end, we managed to mitigate these challenges by careful planning and uh, hiring the expertise at the local level and complete the uh, need assessment project in time. Thank you. If you are describing the methodology. Next, we will hear the findings of this study. And I will invite uh, our colleague, Dr. Arup Chakravarti. He is a state program lead of uh, our West Bengal office. Arup, please.
Thank you, sir. And uh, good evening, everybody who are present in this platform. So I am Dr. Aru. I'll be talking on the findings section of this need assessment study. So please go to the next slide. So our presentation have 11 sections under these findings. First, we'll talk about the profile of the respondents and leprosy affected households and their family members and their disability status. Now, during this assessment, we understood that they have several needs and therefore we'll talk about needs of disability care, assistive devices, education, medical care, livelihood, and also we got some special needs for infrastructure. We have also explored that they need different kind of documents to have access to different services. And at the end, we will conclude. Next slide, please. So profile of the respondents. In this study, we covered seven states, Bihar, Delhi, Jharkhand, Rajasthan, Uttarakhand, Uttar Pradesh, and West Bengal. And from the seven states, we covered 129 leprosy colonies. From all these leprosy colonies, we captured or interviewed 2,192 head of the households. So through those head of those households, we could cover 7,024 total population from these 129 leprosy colonies. Among these head of the households, 59% were men and 41% were women. And among the total population, children who are below 18 years, they account for 26%. Among all those households we interviewed, 68% of them have access to mobile phones. And out of those mobile phones, 34% have internet connectivity with their phones. If you look at this chart, we have described here further the gender distribution of adults and children. Among the adults, male count 36% and female 38%. So female participants are 2% more. However, among the children, both the male and female 13%. So there is no difference in this case. Go to the next slide, please. So leprosy affected households and their family members. Around 89% of the head of the households we interviewed they are leprosy affected. And among those affected households, men counts 58% and women 42%. Almost 2.4% affected person among this population that we covered, their children below 18 years. Now, please look at these two charts. First, we have talked about the leprosy affected households that counts 2,192. So total count is 89%. Rajasthan has the highest where 100% population have responded that their household are leprosy affected. Next to that comes Bihar, Jharkhand, Uttarakhand, Uttar Pradesh, and that ranges from 97% to 98%. Now, when we talk about the overall total population that we covered, 37% people are affected with leprosy. Highest is Jharkhand, contributes 56%. Next two states, uh, Rajasthan and Uttarakhand, around 50%. And minimum is at Delhi, that is 20%. Next, please. Disability and gender. 72% of the household heads, at least they have one disabled person in their family as a member. And around the total population, 28% have any kind of disabilities. Now, among those who have disabilities, 97% of them are due to the cause of leprosy. Now, we also found that 51% of the disabled, they belong to female. And out of those who are disabled, among, within this 51%, 49.6% are due to leprosy. Now, females with disability due to leprosy, Jharkhand has the highest proportion, 60%, and Bihar, 38%. Now, please look at the first chart on the top where we have described the gender distribution among 1,959 
disabled person. Here also, the male counts 48.3% and female 50.5%. So the difference is around 2%. Now, male children and female children, there is no much difference because that is respectively 0.6% and 0.5%. Now, among those who are disabled due to leprosy, the male-female difference is male is 49% and female is 51%. Next slide, please. So, these disabled persons, they have need for some care. Out of 1,959 disabled persons who have been identified, 1,500 of them, which comes to around 77%, they need any kind of disability care which is also de depicted from the pie chart that has been given on the right side, where it says that 77% need disability care and naturally 23% there is no need for that kind of care. Now, interestingly here, one thing we got that women need more disability care than men. If you look at the chart below in the gender distribution among 1500 who have any kind of disability care. Male adults have need for 43.9%, which is around 44%, and female is around, say, 55%. So, female need is almost 11% more than the male. So, the probable explanation can be that among those male, due to their better bargaining power and negotiation power and the usual gender norms, they have more access to different cares which the female have been deprived of. So this kind of gender inequity is one concern in this leprosy colony. If we can remove this, reduce this gender inequity, that will contribute to more development of the colonies. Now, for the male and the female uh, children, the difference is only 0.2% because that is respectively 0.6% and 0.4%. Go to the next, please. So they have need for assistive devices also. 48% out of these total persons who are disabled, they have raised their concern that they need some kind of devices to assist them, which is mostly the MCR footwear, crutches, wheelchair, tricycle. These are different types of support they need, items. And among uh, these assistive devices need, Rajasthan has 78% need followed by Uttar Pradesh 75% and Delhi 65%. Can you look at the chart? The types of different types of devices they have raised that they need this, out of which the maximum is MCR food air, which is 80%. Rest is, next is crutches 46% and wheelchair. One is prosthetic equipment. It may be, you know, point two. it is only 2%, which is lowest. But for arrangement of this kind of prosthetic equipment, it needs more resources, more expert people to be involved. So even though the percentage is less, but to ensure that uh, those who have this kind of need, uh, we need to be very careful and attentive to meet their expectations. Next slide, please. Education. 24% of the colony residents, they have different kind of education support that they need. They are mostly the school fees, school dress, school supplies like stationery, books, bag. Also, many of them need uh, tutors and also some of them have expressed their need for vocational trainings. Among those education needs, 12% expectation came from female and 17% came from the children. Now, the maximum need is from Delhi, 65%, followed by West Bengal, 41%. In the methodology, we told that we also conducted focus group discussion, where from we also could understand that some of the members, they are very much ambitious and they need some support for pursuing their bachelor degrees, nursing courses like AM, GNM, and so on. Next, please. So they have raised that medical care is also important to them. 87% households require any kind of medical need which is again highest in Rajasthan, 82% West Bengal, 65% followed by Uttarakhand. Now, the same focus group discussion, we also identified that particularly the elderly person who are affected by leprosy, they have need for their eye camps, weekly visit of the doctors for their general health checkup. They need different type of prescriptions for other health ailments and also medicine support because they cannot afford that. And also they, they need facilities to meet up their need for uh, severe diseases. 
among different types of medical care, general health care need came from 78%, followed by child health care, immunization support, eye care, and so on. Next slide, please. I was just talking that they have different document needs, particularly to ensure that they, they, they are entitled uh, for the services, they can have access to that. Around 17% have need for the several documents. And also, uh, people have other needs for having access to their pension and then a train pass, pass for their bus, access to Pradhan Mantri Awas, Jujana, Narega, and different government schemes they need. One important thing came is that maximum 33%, please look at the chart, Aishman Bharat card. The Aishman Bharat is, is a public health insurance that covers, you know, uh, tries to ensure the in universal health coverage. So that has come from the maximum need, followed by uh, economically uh, weaker section certificate, PAN card and other card also. These are the needs, uh, the different type of uh, documents that they have expressed that they need those things. Next, please. So livelihood support also came up as important thing. 28% need any kind of livelihood support and 72% they do not tell that they do not need any kind of support. Livelihood support, the highest need came from West Bengal followed by Bihar. Now, one interesting thing came that the female, they have come for their empowerment issues. Their expectation is that they need support to develop small business setup. They need opportunities so that they can uh, develop their own grocery shop, food cart. These are different types like food path vending, goat farming, poultry farming. If that kind of support they get, that will contribute to the overall uh, women empowerment, reducing the gender inequity. Next, please. This is infrastructure need that mostly came from the focus group discussion that we had. Uh, our first issue was that legal uh, electricity connection. Uh, we we come to know that many of the leprosy colonies, uh, they are residing there, but they actually are not owner of those places. So they made some informal arrangements for electricity connection. So if those lines are converted and they become owner of that, so then they want some kind of legal arrangements so that these informal arrangements uh, can be averted. Apart from that, Facility for drinking water, safe drinking water. Some of the places, the approachable road is very narrow so that going out and coming in has become difficult. Now the boundary wall, some of the colonies, they need because of the safety issue is concerned. Some of the households need repair and remodeling. Drainage system needs to be improved for better waste management and to avert vector borne diseases. There is need for male and female washroom separately to maintain privacy and confidentiality. Senior citizens expect that there should be general kitchen. Apart from that, gas, chula, solar lighting or other infrastructure support that have come up. Now, I was talking in the first point about the legal electricity connection, the legal authorization of colonies due to extension of the national highways and uh, railway tracks, particularly in the states of West Bengal, Jharkhand and UP. These are the threats these colonies are facing and they need some kind of support so that their rights are uh, fulfilled and they, they can have safe residence into their colonies. Next, please. So now we'll try to conclude from different quantitative and qualitative data that I was describing, that people have several unmet needs, which is a uh, lot of lists. The number and the items are also large, but we need to prioritize. Now we have to prioritize based on the importance of those needs, which is very much concerned to their day-to-day uh, -day, uh, sustainability. Their safety issues are also important and feasibility, whether we can do that or not. So importance versus feasibility, we have to make a balance and uh, to do our best to meet their needs. Most of the needs can be met through linkages with the government, particularly for the different document needs, their linkages with different schemes. We have some dedicated person in different leprosy colonies who will track them, identify, make a line list and linkage them with different health uh, government schemes, maybe livelihood, health or other different schemes. So that will be good for them. That will not need additional cost. But 
there are some needs for which we need additional resources, maybe in kinds or in money from different donors or different uh, development partners. So we have to work in and hand in hand and we have to work in partnership. So we like to use this platform to share these findings with different stakeholders who are present over there and also the stakeholders who are connected outside this boundary to uh, we want to uh, uh, mention that there are several needs uh, that has been raised and uh, uh, expected from those people residing in this leprosy colony and uh, if we can address them the vulnerability of these people can be to a major extent addressed go to the next slide please so i like to thank you very much for your kind attention and from nlr we all as a team will continue to fight until no leprosy remains thank you very much Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Aru, uh, for a very clear presentation about our findings. So uh, now I uh, invite, uh, actually as per the agenda, now we are supposed to have questions and answers, discussion, right? Uh, so the choice is either we have the discussion now or we have the discussions after we have also heard from our guest of honor and chief guest and uh, naturally they will also have some questions i suppose so maybe maybe we have the discussion later uh, uh, may i now request uh, madam uh, 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 madam uh, our guest of honor madam maya ji madam maya ji ranvade agar aap sambodhit kare hum logon ko आपने आपने अभी हमारी जो हम लोगों ने एक छोटी सी नीड्स असेसमेंट स्टडी की है हम जिस कॉलोनीज में काम करते थे उनमें तो के एक कॉलोनी सात स्टेटों की तो अभी आपको कुछ कुछ फाइंडिंग्स हमने बताई हैं तो आपके अगर कुछ भी प्रश्न हो और आप जो भी हमें संदेश देना चाहते हो कि हम लोग जो कॉलोनी में काम करते हैं उसको और बेहतर तरीके से हम कैसे कर सकें आपके साथ के आपके साथ अपैल सब जगह सारे स्टेट्स में है अपैल के रिप्रेजेंटेटिव और हम लोग उनके साथ में भी काम करते हैं लेकिन हम लोग कैसे और बेहतर कर सकें जैसे कि आपने देखा कि अभी भी बहुत सारी नीड्स हैं जो कि फुलफिल्ड नहीं हुई है जैसे कि आपने अभी देखा कि इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर नीड्स हैं उसके बाद फिर आपकी एक जो डॉक्टर अरूप ने हाईलाइट किया कि फीमेल्स की नीड्स मेल से ज्यादा हैं ऑन डिसेबिलिटी केयर मतलब जो अफेक्टेड है उनका रेशियो है उनचास वर्सेस इक्यावन मतलब फीमेल्स ज्यादा अफेक्टेड है कंपेयर टू मेल्स हमारी जो पॉपुलेशन उसमें केवल दो प्रतिशत का फर्क है लेकिन अगर उनकी नीड्स का आप देखो 45 परसेंट डिसेबिलिटी केयर फीमेल मेल्स ने बताया है 55 बताया है परसेंट फीमेल्स मतलब 45 पचपन मतलब 10 का डिफरेंस है इधर कंपेयर टू मेल फीमेल का रेशियो तो इसका मतलब ये होता है कि फीमेल्स को ज्यादा नीड की जरूरत है कंपेयर टू मेल्स ऑन डिसेबिलिटी केयर और फिर हम लोगों ने फोकस ग्रुप डिस्कशन में भी आखिर में देखा लाइवलीहुड में फीमेल्स ने काफी कुछ बताया है आ, उनके लाइवलीहुड के लिए तो मैडम हम आपसे ये समझना भी चाहेंगे कि ऐसा क्यों है और क्यों आ, और कैसे हम इन सब चीजों को एड्रेस कर सकें आपके सहयोग से मैडम मैडम प्लीज मैडम माया जी इज माया जी देर इज शी कनेक्टेड आई थिंक शी वॉज देर हाँ हाँ माया जी हाँ वेलकम माया जी हाँ हाँ नमस्ते सबको गुड आफ्टरनून नमस्ते तो मैं हाँ Uh, मैंने देखा प्रेजेंटेशन uh, आपका uh, तो 
ऐसा भी है कि ज्यादातर जो महिला है वो सामने नहीं आते हैं कि बताने के लिए कि जैसे कि लेप्रसी हुआ है और बहुत सारी जगह पे स्टिग्मा का प्रॉब्लम भी है जैसे हमारा देश पुरुष प्रधान देश है तो इसके वजह से भी ऐसा होता है कि महिला ज्यादा आगे आती नहीं है और बताते नहीं ये भी एक प्रॉब्लम है तो बहुत सारे ऐसे प्रॉब्लम्स भी है तो हम जैसे अपाल के तरफ से बहुत सारे स्टेट में हमारे स्टेट लीडर्स है कॉलोनी लीडर्स है जो इसके इसके लिए बहुत सारे काम भी कर रहे हैं तो जो प्रमुख हमारे जो अपाल की तरफ से काम अभी चल रहे हैं उसके उसके बारे में मैं थोड़ा सा आपको बताती हूँ और उसके बाद मैं आगे बढ़ती हूँ तो जो कॉलोनी की नेता है कुष्ठ रोग से प्रभावित लोग है उनके जमीन स्तर पे बहुत सारे प्रोग्राम रहते हैं जैसे की कॉलोनी डेवलपमेंट कॉलोनी के जो प्रश्न है उनके लिए एक कार्यक्रम हमारा चलता है कुष्ठ रोगों से रोगों की कॉलोनी का नेटवर्क बढ़ाना कॉलोनी के जितने भी कॉलोनीज है जैसे कि हम मानते हैं कि 800 से ज्यादा भारत में कॉलोनीज है तो ये कॉलोनीज का नेटवर्क बढ़ाना एक बहुत प्रमुख काम है हमारा राज्यों में प्रभावी ढंग से काम करने वाली राज्य नेताओं कॉलोनी के मजबूत उनकी क्षमता बढ़ाना ट्रेनिंग देना और मजबूत करना महिला युवा युवाओं के लिए सशक्तिकरण कार्यशाला चलती है हमारी राज्यों के नेता कॉलोनी के सदस्य युवाओं के क्षमता और ट्रेनिंग के साथ साथ उनका जो भी मानव अधिकार के जो मुद्दे हैं उनके बारे में ही हमारे बहुत सारे ट्रेनिंग और मीटिंग्स चलते हैं मुख्य धारा के लोगों के लिए सरकार डब्ल्यू एच गैर संगठन राष्ट्रीय युवा अंतरराष्ट्रीय एजेंसी के साथ मिलके काम चलते हैं और बहुत सारे ट्रेनिंग भी चलते हैं कुष्ठ रोगों से प्रभावित लोग स्कूल जाने वाले बच्चे व्यवसायिक प्रशिक्षण उच्च शिक्षा और कोचिंग के लिए शिल्प के साथ मिलकर सहयोग करते हैं कुष्ठ रोग रोग और डब्ल्यू एच ओ अधिनियम सुप्रीम कोर्ट का फैसला और कोविड 19 के बारे में विकलांगता का रोकथाम के लिए जन जागृति सरकार के साथ एडवोकेसी कुष्ठ रोगों से प्रभावित व्यक्ति के यूडीआईडी कार्ड सामाजिक अधिकार और सहायक और उनके जमीन मुद्दे मुद्दे में सम, आ, जमीन के जो जो भी मुद्दे हैं उनके जैसे कि हमारे जितने भी कॉलोनीज है उनका जम, जो लैंड का लैंड इशू जो है बहुत सारा है अभी तक कम से कम जितने भी कॉलोनीज है वो अभी तक सरकार के जमीन पे या रेलवे के जमीन पे या म्यूनसिपालिटी के जमीन पे है अभी तक ऐसे कम से कम दस टक्का लोगों के ही जमीन ऐसी है कि जो उनके नाम पे पट्टा है बाकी सभी कॉलोनी अभी भी अतिक्रमण में ही गिनाई जाती है ये एक बहुत बड़ा मुद्दा है और हमारा मुख्य यही उद्देश्य है कि प्रभावित लोग और उन, उनके परिवार मुख्य धारा में जुड़ जाए और वो सम्मान के साथ जिए इस हमारा अपाल का मुख्य मुख्य काम चलता है और जैसे कि कॉलोनीज के जो भी प्रॉब्लम्स है कॉलोनी डेवलपमेंट है महिलाओं के जो प्रॉब्लम आते हैं उनके लिए भी काम करते हैं इस तरह से हमारे काम चलते हैं थैंक यू सो मच धन्यवाद धन्यवाद मैडम मैडम इसके अलावा आपके कोई प्रश्न है जो आप पूछना चाहेंगे क्योंकि तो ये स्टडी हमने की है आ, काफी डिटेल स्टडी है और इसमें हम लोगों ने वहाँ के जो चीन लीडर्स मतलब वहाँ के बच्चों को इन्वॉल्व करके उनको ट्रेन करके कि मोबाइल से कैसे सर्वे किया जा सकता है तो उन के द्वारा हम लोगों ने करवाया है तो मैडम कुछ और चीजें पूछना चाहेंगी इस सर्वे के मतलब जो हमारी फाइंडिंग्स रही हैं उसके ऊपर हाँ तो एक ऐसे पी सर्वे उसमें होना चाहिए कि जो बच्चों को जो प्रॉब्लम आता है जैसे कि जो लेप्रसी पेशेंट के कॉलोनी में रहने वाले बच्चों को क्या प्रॉब्लम्स आता है बाहर के समाज के साथ जुड़ने के लिए वो एक उसमें ऐड करना चाहिए और दूसरी बात यह है कि जैसे कि कॉलेज में जाते हैं बच्चे तो वो अभी भी नहीं बता सकते हैं कि हम लेप्रसी कॉलोनी में रहते हैं तो ये क्या उसके लिए हम क्या कर सकते हैं वो भी उसमें ऐड कर सकते हैं और बच्चों के लिए शिक्षा का जो भी हम उनके लिए कर सकते हैं वो भी प्रयास करना चाहिए थैंक यू मैडम आपके सुझावों के लिए और एक्चुअली शायद ये डेटा ऑलरेडी हमारे पास है 
हमने जो फोकस ग्रुप डिस्कशन किए हैं उसमें ये डेटा शायद होगा तो इससे आपके इस सुझाव से हमें ये भी अब लग रहा है कि ये कुछ इम्पोर्टेंट एलिमेंट्स जो हम फर्दर उसमें से निकाल के प्रेजेंट कर जैसे कि और अच्छा डिस्कशन हो सके और आगे हम उसको यूज कर सके और मैडम एक और प्रश्न था हमारा कि अपैल लेपसी कॉलोनीज में काम कर रहे हैं मतलब आप लोग तो आपका मुख्य उद्देश्य वही है कि और आप रिप्रेजेंट करते हो ठीक है और एनएलआर पिछले 25 साल से कॉलोनीज में काम कर रहे हैं और ये अब कुछ कुछ फाइंडिंग्स आई हैं ठीक है इसका मतलब ये है कि जितना भी काम हुआ है वो इनफ नहीं है मतलब अभी भी बहुत कुछ और करना बाकी है ठीक है तो हम वो जो बाकी जो काम है वो हम लोग हम लोग साथ में ऑलरेडी काम कर रहे हैं लेकिन किस तरह से हम क्या योजना बनाएं जिससे कि जो उसका इम्पैक्ट हो लेपसी कॉलोनीज में वो बेटर हो जैसे कई बार हम लोगों को क्या होता है कि कई सोचो दस अलग अलग चीजें हैं जो एड्रेस करनी है तो कई बार हम उनको प्रायोरिटाइज करते हैं मतलब इनमें से कौन सी ज्यादा इम्पोर्टेंट है और जिसका जिसका रिजल्ट भी अच्छा होगा ठीक है ऐसी कौन सी चीजें आपको लगी जैसे हमारी जो नीड्स आई हैं उनमें से कौन सी ऐसी चीजें आपको लगी कि जिनको हम लोगों हम लोगों को जल्दी से एड्रेस करना चाहिए जो कि इम्पोर्टेंट है और जो जो अफेक्टेड पॉपुलेशन है जिनको अभी लेप्रेसी नहीं है लेकिन क्या है कि उनको डिसेबिलिटी है या उनके बच्चों को उसके परिवार को स्टिग्मा डिस्क्रिमिनेशन पॉवर्टी ये ये सब उनको सहन करना पड़ रहा है ठीक है तो तो कौन सी ज्यादा चीजें ऐसी इम्पोर्टेंट है जिनको हमें एज ए प्रायरिटी हमें एड्रेस करना चाहिए और हम लोग एक दूसरे के सहयोग से उसको कैसे एड्रेस करें माया जी हम्म तो ये बहुत बड़ी बात है कि हम सब जितने भी संस्था एक ही उद्देश्य है सबका कि लेप्रसी लोगों को और उनका स्टिग्मा कम करना और उनको जैसे सरकार के हो या संस्था के जितने भी स्कीम्स हो उनको पहुंचाया जाए ये सब सबका उद्देश्य यही है तो ये जैसे कि हो रहा है कि अलग अलग जैसे कि दस काम है तो आप एक एक जगह पे कर रहे हैं हम एक जगह पर कर रहे हैं दूसरी संस्था दूसरे जगह पे कर रहे हैं तो ये सभी संस्था साथ मिलके एक 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 ही काम जैसे कि एक काम के लिए दस लाख रुपए लग रहे हैं तो बाकी जितने भी संस्था है सबने एक एक लाख रुपए उसपे लगा दिया और जैसे कि हम एक में उदाहरण बोल रही हूँ तो उसमें हमने लगा दिया तो वो दस लाख का कम काम जो आसानी से हो जाएगा तो उसको टाइम नहीं लगेगा जैसे ही जल्दी से जल्दी हो जाएगा और जितने भी स्कीम्स है जो भी सरकार के जितने भी स्कीम्स के तो एक जगह पे जैसे कि सभी संस्था ने मिलके एक जैसे हम एक बना सकते हैं कि ऑनलाइन बना सकते हैं उसको कि उसको बोलते हैं कि मोबाइल पे ही एक लिंक दिया जाए या एक फोन नंबर हो टोल फ्री फोन फोन नंबर हो उसमें जैसे कोई भी फोन करेंगे तो वो बता सकते हैं कि ये ये स्कीम है आपकी और आपको यहाँ पे उसका क्या 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 उनको करना चाहिए तो ये आसानी से हम उन तक पहुंचा पहुंचा जा सकते हैं जितने भी स्कीम्स है तो ये एक अच्छा हम कर सकते हैं हम सब संस्था मिलके वेरी गुड मैडम ये तो आपने मेरी मुंह की बात आपने छीन ली मतलब एग्जैक्टली exactly यही चीज एन ने सोचा हुआ है इस साल से करने का कि एक ऐसा एप्लीकेशन uh, बनाया जाए जिसमें सारी जितने भी सरकार की स्कीम्स हैं जो कि इम्पोर्टेंट हैं लेप्रेसी अफेक्टेड पॉपुलेशन के लिए वो उसमें हो और उसको कैसे एक्सेस किया जा सके uh, तो इसके लिए uh, हम लोग आपसे बड़ी जल्दी बात करने वाले हैं आपसे भी बात करने वाले हैं और दूसरे स्टेक होल्डर से भी जिससे कि इसको हम लोग कार्यान्वित कर सकें थैंक यू मैडम अब मैं अब मैं मूव करना चाहूंगा रिक्वेस्ट करना चाहूंगा हमारे चीफ गेस्ट को हमारे चीफ गेस्ट जो आप लोग को सबको पता है सिल्फ सिल्फ के बारे में जो कि इलेक्ट्रिसिटी के ऊपर बहुत ज्यादा काम कर रही हैं और वो एक फंडिंग एजेंसी भी हैं 
तो उनका उनका उनके सीईओ हमारे साथ है आप गौरव जी मिस्टर गौरव सिंह गौरव जी को रिक्वेस्ट करूंगा कि वो हमें एड्रेस करें तो उन्होंने आपने सर अभी तक सुना है कि जो है लोगों ने ये स्टडी में उनको फाइंडिंग रही है एंड यू हैव आल्सो हर्ड द डिस्कशन व्हिच वी जस्ट नाउ हैड विद माया जी सो ओवर टू यू गौरव जी नमस्कार आप सभी को आई एम सॉरी फॉर जॉइनिंग लेट आई बीन ट्रैवलिंग फॉर द लास्ट टू डेज हियर एंड हियर एंड देयर सो गेटिंग अ कनेक्शन एंड गेटिंग अ प्रॉपर प्लेस टू सी इट हैज बीन अ स्ट्रगल फॉर मी सो क्षमा चाहता हूं उसके लिए थोड़ा सा लेट हो गया मुझे जॉइन करने में इट हैज बीन अ वंडरफुल डिस्कशन पॉइंट्स एंड आई थिंक वी ऑल आर थ्राइविंग फॉर दैट फॉर क्वाइट सम टाइम नाउ एंड आई विल स्टार्ट फ्रॉम द लास्ट टू पॉइंट्स दैट माय जी हैज आल्सो मेंशन एंड डॉक्टर अशोक अग्रवाल हैज आल्सो मेंशन we need to work together collective work is the only solution that i feel because there are 800 colonies across the country and uh, almost impossible to for one organization or one individual or one entity to reach out to all the people over there and we all are struggling for that and sils work is mainly in the colonies we have been working only in the leprosy colonies the self settled leprosy colonies but for us also for the last 16 17 years we are working in india in the leprosy colonies still we could not cover the all the colonies and that might be because uh, it is a very sporadic sporadic uh, instances that are, we are taking from from multiple states and that we are addressing those issues there rather than reaching out to all, all the places and this is something i think uh, given the resources given the manpower that we have in any organization it is not about sin but any organization it is almost difficult so a collective approach that all the organizations working in the field of leprosy should be developed so that we address things together and there should be a collective effort uh coming to the other point that maya ji has raised this is also one of our concerns is that in leprosy colonies the persons affected by leprosy the number of persons affected by leprosy is gradually decreasing there are many such colonies where there is hardly one patient i was in mangalore yesterday in one colony there is only one patient one person affected by leprosy so there are colonies where there is so we have need to address the people who are living there the second generation how to address their problems mainly their infrastructure their livelihood because they are also stigmatized because they live in the leprosy colonies so this is another point that i i think we need to talk about more and uh, need to address their problems quite often from sasakawa india leprosy foundation we are uh, supporting the second generation in terms of scholarship in terms of livelihood support but now there are third generation as well so there is also a discussion whether we should support the third generation or we have already supported the first and the second generation and we have made them self reliant and they should support their own third generation in the colonies so these are all discussion and dialogues that is going on but collectively we need to decide about that when we think about the colonies and when we work in the colonies i like the idea uh, from the presentation that uh, nlr is involving their change agents in the data collection process we have heard about the change agents in our last discussion last uh, live and we all were like uh, very excited to hear about their stories we are very excited to the process that nlr has developed up to having their change agents in the in the colonies and how they are doing good works and we have heard their stories as well stigma regarding data collection is also a problem a challenge that uh, self also faces when it comes to livelihood support many people who are into begging so they don't want to disclose that sometimes it is a challenge sometimes it is uh, there is a backlash because in in certain colonies they find that bagging is a lucrative business rather than what they are getting from self any kind of support that we give because our support is very minimum to start any small scale business so it is it is a concern also one concern is the documentation they don't many of the people living in the colonies they don't have a document proper document proper bank account when we are trying to link them with with 
the appropriate authorities to get those documents done, the other card, the pen card, the bank account, because nowadays the rules are very strict and we need to have all the documents before we sanction any kind of support, any kind of money to any beneficiary across the country. So that is a different, I mean, a issue for all the organizations who are working with the persons affected by leprosy. The other concern that that has been raised in the presentation, I, I found I think with this, the legal authorization of colonies. Many of the colonies, self settled colonies are are established in, in government lands, railway lands or lands donated by somebody, but and they're living there for 50 years now. And suddenly there is a notice, there is a, some kind of a threat that they face that they have to evacuate the land and the, and the place that they are living for last 50 years. And they're like at a loss where to go, where the children will go. We at SILF actually not very sure how to address this issue because our work and our domain is different, but this hampers some of our work. And especially when we want to do some kind of an infrastructure development, we are doing that infrastructure development in colonies for the last three, four years. Uh, we toilet in the we have community hall ka repair, jo bhi hota hai, wo bana rahe. and toilet is a major issue in many of the colonies, especially for the females. Log uh, washroom use nahi kar paate kyunki darwaza nahi hota hai wahan pe tuta hua hai pani ki vyavastha nahi hoti hai so they come to us initially we didn't realize that when we started working in in very vulnerable colonies in bihar or uh, ups we found that we cannot do our livelihood we cannot talk about the education of the children until and unless we address those basic things in the colonies which is their daily needs and which needs to be addressed first for example, I can give you the example of uh, the colony in Pune. When it started in 2021, and uh, we went there and we found that, okay, it's so deplorable. The condition is the pathetic. Malnutrition is one of the issues. There are a number of children in the colonies who have malnutrition. There is no toilet, the filthy uh, approach to the colony. So we stopped talking about livelihood and education, which is a flagship program of SILF. And we started working on those basic issues. Unke chhat nahi hai. We provided Tirpal so that at least the Barsat ne unke pani na tap ke ghar pe. So very basic things. And before that, self never thought about humanitarian aid support beyond uh, flood relief and etc. The emergency things. And after that, we, we started one specific segment, humanitarian aid committee in the organization for looking after such kind of issues, which is very basic for the colonies. Unless we address those issues, talking about livelihood, talking about dignity, talking about uh, education is, we found that it's useless. So we started with that as well. So definitely the infrastructure is one of the issues that we are also facing and we are, we are trying to address that issue for the last three years. And many of the colonies, we have built toilets, we have uh, given water supports, we have uh, repaired their drainage system in the colonies. But again, coming to the, the first point that we discussed, that we cannot reach out to every column, impossible task, Herculean task for any organization, any individual, any entity. So let us come together, share whatever data we have, data collection, whoever is working in the colony, we have some kind of, we may not have the structured kind of one that NLR has presented, but definitely when you start working in the colony, at least we have the basic things that, that is needed like how many children, what is the education need, what is the livelihood need. So we all have a basic kind of an information while working in the colonies. Epal definitely, Epal is, is based out of the colonies. We're working very closely with Epal. Epal people are uh, working closely with us as well. We engage them. We engage their support when you select beneficiaries in the colonies. So the other people who give us the recommendation, may it be a scholarship program, may it be a livelihood program, or even an infrastructure development, we, we invite, uh, application from the colony leaders or the state leaders and then we pursue that accordingly as per the need as per the priority so once again let us come together and it should be a collective effort that i feel that i believe or well, any organization who is working in that field they believe even the medical and healthcare this is not a, a, a thing that self does 
it, it is our, our priority area is education and livelihood. So if there is something that we find that a, a medical support or any kind of health support is needed, we might go back to any other organizations who are working in the field of health or medical care for the persons affected by leprosy. So these are the things that we can we can combine, we can collaborate, and uh, we are open for discussion. Whatever the things are, we are we are constant touch with with APAL on a regular basis. We have yearly meetings with APAL as well. So invite them, talk with them to understand their problems and issues and everything. So I think and that much from my side. And um, so it's certain issues that I find. I mean, it's a synergy like. All the organizations are having this kind of issues and it's nothing that SILF is facing or NLR is not facing or NLR is facing or SILF is not facing. And we're trying our level best to do this. And I really, really appreciate that kind of an effort that NLR has started. I mean, um, this is a platform that we maybe we all are looking for, but we could not make it because of time or because of uh, issues or resources or whatever. So thank you for that, for the platform, for creating that platform for all of us to to talk to each other and at least getting to know each other here in this platform. And thank you for having me twice. So it's an, it's an honor to talk in front of all the people here. Thank you so much. Thanks. Thanks, Gauravji, for a very uh, pointed uh, talk. And uh, I think two very important points you made. One is uh, uh, we should be collaborating. And that goes without saying. And the second thing which uh, I take from your uh, uh, talk is uh, uh, self priority on infrastructure. So uh, this is something which can be very useful, like it has also come out in our findings, uh, particularly toilets, toilets for females. So we will uh, we have a lot to talk and work together. So thank you. So I have last three minutes. Now within these three minutes, I want to address the two questions which have been asked in the chat box. Uh, one question is straightforward, where uh, uh, the question is that what is the need for a general kitchen for senior citizens? Well, the senior citizens are dependent for uh, for their needs, right? Uh, so they may not be able to cook their own food. They may not be having uh, children, other family members. So it's a request by senior citizens in particular that if there could be a general kitchen for them. Uh, the second question, which is again from one of our colleagues, where uh, uh, he actually, ye Maya ji ko unhone poocha hai ki apal ke taraf se colony mein kya sahayata hoti hai. Uh, Varanasi mein Ganga kushta astram hai, jo railway ke jameen se bana hai. Railway ke dwara chhai ghar ko tod diya gaya hai. Is mein apal ka, apal ka kya yogdaan ho raha hai. आस्टम में आजीविका का क्या की व्यवस्था है अपेल का क्या योगदान है तो मैडम क्या मैं आपको फिर से रिक्वेस्ट कर सकता हूं इस प्रश्न का जवाब देने के लिए हाँ जो थैंक यू सो मच वो प्रश्न पूछने के लिए तो वाराणसी में जो भी कॉलोनीज है वहाँ पे रिंकू नाम की जो लेडीज है वहाँ पे वो कॉलोनी के लीडर है उन्होंने बहुत सारा वहाँ पर हमने भी उनको सपोर्ट किया है कि काम करने में और अभी उन्होंने जो कॉलोनीज के जो पांच छह लोगों का जो ये टूट गया है घर उन्होंने उनके कॉलोनी में उनको जगह दी है अभी वो वहां पर रह रहे है मैं जाके खुद देख के आई हूँ उनको तो अभी उनका कोई प्रॉब्लम नहीं पांच या छह ही घर थे अभी वहां पे उनके कॉलोनी में जो खाली घर थे वहां पे उन्होंने दिया है अभी वो रह रहे हैं और अभी आगे जाके जो कॉलोनी का जो भी हिस्सा जो जाने वाला है उसके लिए हम गवर्नमेंट से भी बहुत सारी बातें हो चुकी है रेलवे मिनिस्टर से के साथ भी बात हो चुकी है और अभी उनका कुछ नहीं हुआ तो हम अभी केस का एक लास्ट का हमने ऑप्शन रखा है कि हम केस भी करना चाहते हैं तो अभी उसके ऊपर हमारा काम चल रहा है थैंक यू थैंक यू मैडम अब मैं जो लोग जुड़े हुए हैं हमारे इस प्लेटफॉर्म पे उनको एक चांस देना चाहता हूं अगर कोई भी प्रश्न हो तो अपना हाथ ऊपर करके आप पूछ सकते हैं सॉरी ओके तो या राइट 
तो अब अब मैं अपने कलीग मैडम डॉक्टर सुचित्र लिस्म को इनवाइट करता हूँ फॉर गिविंग द वोट ऑफ थैंक्स सुचित्रा थैंक यू सर नमस्कार एंड गुड इवनिंग एवरीवन एट द आउटसेट आई लाइक टू थैंक एंड एक्सप्रेस ग्रेटिट्यूड टू मिस्टर गौरव कुमार सेन चीफ एग्जीक्यूटिव ऑफिसर ससाकावा इंडिया लेप्रेसी फाउंडेशन और चीफ गेस्ट ऑफ टूडे लाइव वर्चुअल इवेंट थैंक यू मिस्टर सेन फॉर प्रिसाइडिंग दिस गैदरिंग एंड फॉर डिलीवरिंग एंड इंस्पायरिंग की नॉट एड्रेस that helps us in reflection on our work in corporate lessons learned to improve our support to persons affected by leprosy and the roles that our partners play as you rightly said sir collective approach and effort is the only solution for way forward there is need for a larger dialogue among partners for continuing the support to second or third generation leprosy affected and their dependents legalization of the colonies and basic infrastructure was requirement etc thank you for all these invaluable inputs and advice sir i take this opportunity to express my heartfelt thanks to mrs maya ranavari president association of people affected by leprosy apal for being with us today as our guest of honor madam your presence in this meeting has brought in meaningful participation of apal and the importance of partnerships as we advise madam working more closely with heads of colonies are instrumental in strengthening support to leprosy colonies for improving the quality of life of persons affected through improved linkages with relevant government scheme that could be made available and accessible under one online platform thank you madam for your invaluable advice now i thank our nlr india colleagues namely dr pradipta nayak national community based rehabilitation coordinator for sharing good insights about needs of persons affected by leprosy the background of conducting the needs assessment and the need to update our database on the basis of the finding so that our decision and future intervention is data driven my thank goes to mr amit jain manager monitoring and evaluation learning for presenting the methodology of this important need assessment of colon leprosy colonies I thank Dr. Aruf Kumar Chakravarti, State Program Lead, West Bengal, for presenting the detailed findings and conclusion of the need assessment that was conducted across 129 colonies in seven states on behalf of the study team. It's important to note that 1,500 persons affected, that is 77 of those affected, need disability care, and women need more care compared to men. I also take this opportunity to thank our NLR support team for this live virtual event without whom it would not have been possible to organize and execute it. The names of our staff are the communication team members namely Marvel Basil and Sandeepa Mudi who have supported in designing posting the invitation on media accounts and organizing the event. I thank Kajal Kiran admin officer for her support in sending the invitation mail to all the participants. My thank goes to Arpit Sharma and Akshar Garg or IT team for ensuring smooth execution of this event. I thank Dr. Ashok Agarwal sir, CEO of NLR India for moderating this very important event and for his stewardship and dynamic leadership. Lastly, I thank all our participants who have joined us today virtually. Have a wonderful evening. Thank you. Thank you everyone. Thank you.